Hi everyone, thank you for joining us again for another Zoo Creates at Home. I'm Tegan and this is Keisha joining me today. Hi guys. We work here in the education department together and today instead of a craft, we are going to be creating our own snacks. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to be using some Oreo cookies. Yes, and we're going to turn them into bats. So, one cookie we're going to take, so you're going to need two of them. We're going to leave one just how it is. We might need to pop it open at one, some point, but really we need to take our second cookie and then we're going to break it in half or even take one side off and then break that in half. So. One cookie is Ooh. going to be our body, and then we're going to use, yeah, just like that, Keisha. Yep. We're going to use the <laughs> broken pieces as wings. Okay. So I'm just going to insert, yep, and I guess I do have to take this apart. So I'm going to turn the cookie like this, as to not break it, and open it up, just so that I can fit this cookie in the side, like that just to squeeze it in there. Oops. Because that's going to be the wing. Did you break it? Yep. <laughs> you break it, you might just have to eat it and get oh, another one. darn. All right. And I think it's okay, really, if they break. Sorry, so another thing we're going to do is we're going to use some frosting, or if you have powdered sugar at home, you can add some milk or water to that powdered sugar and make your own icing or frosting to use. So if you need some glue, Keisha, you can use some, a little bit more frosting to put those pieces back together. So that frosting serves as a type of glue. I am struggling. <laughs> And go ahead and take your time. Kind of takes the right touch with these cookies because they are kind of brittle, so they will break easily, which is good because we want them to break. But then we have our body with wings. So bats are not birds, but they do have wings that help them fly. So we've got those wings on there. We need some other body parts. So, Keisha, do bats have eyes? Yep. Do they have really good eyesight? Mm, it's okay. It's okay? Yeah. So they have eyes, but they don't need to be very big. But when we're creating things, sometimes it's okay to have big eyes, right? <laughs> big eyes are cute. <laughs> I think some of my favorite animals have big eyes. So to make eyes, you can use whatever you have at home. We've got some Skittles here, maybe you have some M&Ms or another type of candy, or we've got some chocolate chips, even mini chocolate chips if you want to make them small eyes, or maybe some marshmallows. I've, I've actually got some dehydrated marshmallows here, the kind that you would find like in hot chocolate, um, the prepackaged hot chocolates. Um, but regular mini marshmallows would work, or we've got some raisins here. So there's lots of different things you can use for your eyes. And I'm just gonna dab a little bit of that frosting on the back side of my chocolate chip here as glue. And I'm gonna put those eyes on there. The nice thing about the Skittles is that you'll be able to see those eyes really well because they'll be a nice bright color. Mm -hmm. Ooh, my chocolate chip's kind of melting on my finger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about, do bats have a mouth? Do they have a mouth? Yes, bats do have mouths. Do they have teeth inside their mouth? So, yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm going to use the white frosting, or if you have a different color, you can use a different color. And I'm going to put a mouth with maybe some teeth. Hmm. I'm just going to paint that on there with my frosting. I don't know how to go about this. I don't think there's side. any right or wrong way. <laughs> awesome. Oh, there it is. Okay, and then 
There's my bat. Awesome. And just Whoa. like that. Oh, see, I like the Skittle eyes. Nice. Those look very nice. <laughs> it looks really cute. All right. So that's our bat Oreos. And the reason I asked about the eyes is because I know bats tend to be outside at nighttime. Mm -hmm. That's usually when I see them. When the yep. sun's going down, that's when they're outside. And so a lot of animals I know that like to be awake at night don't have very big eyes. That's kind true. Of yep, so we call animals that are awake during the night and asleep during the day, we call that nocturnal. And most nocturnal animals are going to have much smaller eyes because that's not usually the sense that they're going to um, be utilizing the most. Um, they're gonna be using their other five senses like um, taste and smell and hearing um, a little bit more than they're going to be using their eyesight. So. The size of the eyes doesn't matter very much. Right, and I guess animals like owls, owls some owls have really big yes. eyes so that they can see better at night. Yeah. So owls must not use the sense of smell very much when they're hunting. Yeah, so they actually do use their eyes a lot. So there always are gonna be a few outliers when it comes to animals and just science in general. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely those owls are one of them. Um, owls are super, super cool because they have those huge eyes. They're actually so big that they cannot move independently on their face. So that's why you always see um, owls moving their heads a lot and why they can turn their heads around so far. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. okay, so they can't do this? Nope, they cannot. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, well, maybe we can get ready for our animal visitor then. Yes. So today, the animal visitor we brought with us is a nocturnal animal. Yes, he and is. And this is also an animal that does not have very big eyes. All right, get these yummy snacks out of the way. We'll bring some yummy snacks for him up, even though they probably won't be too Ooh. tasty to us. <laughs> right. So I see our snacks. Ooh, we've got some bugs in here. Yes. So maybe it's a bat, because I know bats like to eat bugs. Yeah, so some bats do like to eat bugs, but I did not bring a bat today. Okay. <laughs> we'll have to see. Sorry, I have to maneuver a little bit around here. All right, he has dug himself pretty far. Awesome. <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can All see. All right. Oh, you've been playing. He has been. All right, everybody. So this is Scoots, and he is a nine-banded armadillo. Very cool. So armadillos are nocturnal. Ones. Yeah, so um, he would be a nocturnal animal. Um, and we actually have him in a room um, that we accommodate for that as well. Um, Scoots is one of the animals that we do take on programs. And because we are not nocturnal um, beings, we are diurnal, which means we're awake during the day and asleep during the night. Um, it'd be very hard on him to just be making, to wake him up during his sleep time and take him on programs. So what we do is we actually have a reverse light cycle room. So what that is, is we make sure that during our day and when we're awake, it's very dark in that room and it mimics the night. So it actually makes him feel like it's um, actually nighttime outside. So that way, um, he's on the kind of the same schedule as we are, and when we take him to programs, he's usually a little bit more awake, just like now. Cool, so uh, what type of animal is Scoots? Um, I see some hard stuff on him, yeah. but I also see some hair sticking out the bottom. Yeah, so he has hair all on his belly, and um, when we think about hair or fur, we usually think about mammals. So Scoots is a mammal. Yep. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So is the outer part... Um, what is that made out of if he's a mammal? So it kind of feels a little leathery. We call them, um, this area of his body, we call this kind of like a scoot. And okay. that's why we named him Scoots. Um, but his outer layer of his body actually feels a lot like a basketball. 
So oh, okay. that kind of um, thicker, kind of plasticky, leathery feel is what his body feels like. Very cool. Yeah. Now, he's got some pretty big ears. They're sticking up pretty far. Does he have a really good sense of hearing? Yes, so Scoots can hear very, very well. Um, that is another thing, like we had talked about before with nocturnal animals using different senses. Um, his, his hearing is very heightened, and that's actually what he uses uh, as a main sense for him. Um, and touch is another one that he uses as well to make sure he gets around and maneuvers um, easily. Um, yeah. So that's cool. what he uses to kind of... Yeah, so that's kind of similar to bats, right? Mm -hmm. Bats have a really good sense of hearing, and that's how yes. they get around. Yeah, so bats actually have a really cool sense of hearing. Um, they can do something called echolocation, um, where they actually use their own sounds to bounce off of things around them so they can actually tell where they are. Very cool. Yeah. Now, Scoots doesn't have that ability, but he's still pretty cool. Um, yeah. These, uh, This nice leathery body that he has actually is used for protection, too. Um, he actually can roll up slightly, not into a complete ball. Mm -hmm. So the more bands an armadillo has, so um, these little edges right here on his body are called his bands. So the more bands they have, the less flexibility that they have. So a three-banded armadillo would actually be able to roll up into that ball. Oh, okay. Yep, but Scoots here is actually designed to just protect his under soft belly a little bit more. So there's lots of different kinds of armadillo. Yeah, there are. So here at Blink Park Zoo, we have a nine-banded and a six-banded armadillo. Okay, and do they live in different places? Yes, they do live in different places. So you could actually find Scoots um, here in the United States, um, more down south and in like Texas areas where you can find most of them. Um, and our six-banded, you can find those, um, I think it's Central and South America. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, what does Scoots like to do as an armadillo? Yeah, that's great. So Scoots really loves to dig. Um, armadillos are very, very strong um, and very fast as well. Most people don't know this, but Scoots can get up to about 30 miles per hour, hour while running. Wow, that's really fast. Yes, it is very fast. And he can actually jump about four feet straight in the air as well. Um, now, those are both defense mechanisms. Um, the first one running, obviously, we know why that's such a good defense. Um, the second one, that jump, is actually kind of a startling thing. So um, for me, if I saw an armadillo this size jump four feet in the air, that would make me a little nervous. And for most yes. animals, that makes them nervous as well. So they're less apt to want to um, have this guy as a snack if it gets a little nerve wracking sometimes. So that's why they do that. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for t sharing Scoots yeah, with us and coming of course. here today. Um, it's been a blast. Yes, it has. Well, if you guys have any comments or questions, please uh, let us know in, in the area below. And we would love to see more of those pictures. You guys are doing such a great job. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys.